Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to have a look at how you can create a pivot table that pulls information from two separate source data tables. So this is a finished example. So I have a, a small table of sales, products, price and everything, and then a small table of staff and their position. What I've done is I've got a pivot table it's looking at both these tables and then the pivot table report is looking at salesperson from this table and the sales that they made on this table. So ink and paper was Dave Green. Sales ID 1 or staff ID 1 coming from this table, Dave Green. Now how you do this is first of all you have to create these tables and then save them as tables and then add them to the data model so that's what I want to do on a brand new sheet so if I click on control N for new and then just start basically typing that out sales ID I'll just do the um, item cost price and staff ID so that's a that's the linking field that you need that in there so I'll just put some random numbers in there one two three four five and then we'll have in fact I've gotten one missing there haven't I? cost price and sale price just move that one out of the way sale price so item was ink printer I'm just making these up Dell three four five Epsom, one, two, three, and paper. That'll do. Cost price for ink, say five pound. Printer, one hundred and twenty, three pound. Dell, and Epsom, and then paper, six pound. Can't stand looking at that small P, so I'll just change that to a capital. So these are all pounds. Just get that into format. Need to pounds. Let's just add 10% onto that, so it's going to be equals that plus that times 10%. Now it'll do the times 10% first anyhow, so I don't need any brackets on there. So that'll just do that. Double click that down. Now staff ID, let's say, oops. Staff ID 1 did the first two, two, and then three um, did the last two. Then you create your staff table. So you've got staff ID and then name and position. You don't really need to do a position for this, but so I've got three members of staff, one, two, three. And then we've got Sue Black, Barry White, and John green and we have a manager and then two sales assistant sales assistant just sales assist control D to repeat that and there you go so now this needs to be formatted as a table and so does that one so format as table is on the home tab so I'll just pick blue my table has headers yep in it goes and then I'll do it again this one I'll make the screen so it's just different okay so now if you want you can name the table I'll just call this staff and call this one sales you don't need to name them but I am so we've got we've got sales and staff now what I now need to do is is add these tables to the data model so I'm going to power pivot and I'm going to click on, well, I'm in this table, so I'm going to add to data model. So if I bring that other screen across, because it's gone onto my other monitor, there it is. Just leave it like that. It's added that one. And then I want to add this one. Add to data model. And then it adds that. And you can see on this one that you have sales table and your staff table now let's just make this full screen for a minute 
I'm going to do a pivot table, but what I need to do is make sure that the it picks up these two tables. So if I click on pivot, it won't set in a new worksheet. I'll put it on an existing worksheet and I'll just put it there. Well, there. Okay. And then okay to that. And I've got my two tables. So if I expand this, what I can now do is say, let's say I want the, the name to be in the row. So that's a list of names. And then I want item and sale price. So you've got a list of items and sale prices. Now you see what it's done there. It's just repeated everything, which is obviously not what I want. So it's come up with auto detect uh, relationship. So I'll click on auto detect. It's detected the staff ID as relationship. So I can click that and close. I still need to go into this and change this to pounds. Number format accounting okay okay to that so that's now displayed in pounds so i can pick any of these fields from these two tables now that they are related friends once the relationship has been made the computer's made it you can have a look at the relationship by going into manage back into manage and then you can actually look at these tables if you come across to this side, you can see we're looking at them in data view. But if you click on diagram view, you've got the two tables with a many symbol there. So one to many. And if you hover over the line, the two fields that are linked together are highlighted. Staff ID, which is correct. That's the correct link that we want. Um, if I close this down, I quite like looking at that view. That's a cool view. But if you go to the data tab, You've also got the option of creating relationships here. So you could do this before you even add these to the data model. And all you do there is you go new and then you would select. So you've got the, because I named these table. So you've got sales and then you've got the staff ID. And then you've got staff staff ID and it's telling me there there's a relationship already exists well I know that because the computer did it for me so it doesn't really matter when you do the relationship it's just that you need to do it so if you think you want you don't want the computer to pick it up or you don't want to go all the way through the whole process to that stage and then get the computer to pick it up you do it first yourself um, and I think by naming the tables this time it does make it a little bit easier to see because that will just say table one, table two, which might, doesn't mean anything. That's a bit easier to understand. But it's it's the same process. You're creating a relationship. It will sit in this window. And then when you go into your data model, you will be able to see it through the view that I showed you a second ago as, as a diagram, similar to Microsoft Access. That's all I want to show you on this little example. So hopefully that was of use to you. Uh, thank you for your time. I'll see you on the next one.